recovering from a network connectivity issue this morning. Hopefully, regular flight operations will be resolved sh shortly. 400,000 passengers stranded when all flights went down due to a software bug. In our hyper-connected modern, hyper modern world, I dare to ask the question, which will kill you sooner, cyber terrorism or software bugs? Let's take a little look into this and kind of see if we can answer that question. 1980 NORAD faulty circuit problem not captured by the software system checks enabled a false report to state that there was missiles coming in. Zero, 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 zero was apparently replaced with two. A phone call to the White House at 2.25 a.m. 1983 Soviet nuclear early warning system malfunctioned and reported that, we, that the Soviets were under attack from America. Thank heavens the software engineer at the time used his gut feeling and reported it as a false alarm. 1985 Therac 25 radiation therapy machine delivered 100 times in the intended dose of radiation due to a miscalculation in software. Nobody died on that one, but there was not a very good outcome. 1994, in Scotland, Chinook helicopter crashed, killing all 29 passengers on board. Initially, the pilot was blamed for the error. However, in further investigations, they found that it was a faulty software bug that actually caused the downing. 1998, NASA's $655 million Mars Climate Orbiter disintegrates as its trajectory, as its trajectory went off site. So apparently, somebody didn't read their contract and the calculation was done in pound seconds instead of newtons. There is nobody in outer space to push a reset button, NASA has recently said, but they are looking for any volunteers if anybody would like to take up that role. In 2000, radiation therapy planning software delivered different doses which resulted in massive overdoses. There was five people reported dead, however, off record, they expect that there was approximately 21 people that were actually killed. 2003, a race condition bug causes blackout across eight states in the US and Canada. 50 million people were affected, 256 power plants went offline all due to a software bug. 2003, computer software blunder at St. Mary's Mercy Medical Center in Michigan cost the lives of 8,500 patients. These patients' families were informed and they were told that they were no longer alive. They actually were alive, it was just that there was a software bug that reported all these people dead and, as I said, informed Social Security and also their families. Software bugs, what can I say? 2005, Michigan Department of Corrections experienced a computer programming glitch which led to the early release of 23 prisoners. Apparently, they weren't too concerned because these at least weren't murderers, as they stated in the news report. So start at the moment, we've looked at real deaths by software bug 78, false deaths 8,500. None of this so far has been caused by cyber terrorism. So in our hypermodern connected world, as we all know, software will eat the world, as Mark Andreessen said in the Wall Street Journal. As software becomes more and more important and runs all our modern day systems, I beg to ask the question, should we be concerned about cyber terrorism or should we be concerned about the quality of our code? Because in a hypermodern connected world with large distributed systems, the quality of code becomes not just important, but it actually becomes a necessity to us. And we cannot be left in these scenarios because there are human lives at stake here. And the more connected we become, the more human lives that are at stake. And the more abstracted we become in our code and our education of code, the more we are going to be putting ourselves in these positions. Software bug should not take down a system. We currently are looking at our infrastructure and we're building our infrastructure to handle faults, to handle fault tolerance, to handle failures. If a container goes offline or a node goes offline, it shouldn't really affect anything. So I beg to say that we need to architect our software for failure. 
We need to accommodate for failures. We also need to teach fault-tolerant code design patterns. We cannot be expecting things to not to always run. And how do we do this? Well, education is the key. Sometimes we have to admit that we don't know everything. We have to ask for help, we have to learn from each other, and we have to share our information and share our bugs and share our problems. Thank you.